All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's good to have you here in the university open source working group call. I have a few things on the agenda today and um, just kind of some organization as we continue to move forward on kind of that, that taxonomy of stuff. So I just would like to point out to folks that there was a new round of funding that came out from Sloan to support an additional set of university OSPOs. And this is the list here. Um, we've been reaching out to everybody on this list. So those emails went out last week, uh, encouraging them to participate in this working group. And we've heard back from, I think, half of the universities on this list who have said, yeah, they'd definitely like to join. But to Sean's point, we reached out on Friday. <laughs> like We have a meeting on Wednesday. And I don't know that everybody could join right away, um, but I'll continue to to kind of foster that conversation and encourage them to join. I, it also might be um, kind of busy for a lot of them, just as they're kind of getting these grants started and getting their university OSPOs off the ground. So, um, so just anyway, that's going pretty well. Um, what I wanted to do, we don't have a, a big group here today, but I, what I wanted to do was kind of talk about um, this as we continue to think about university open source activities um, and continue to get your feedback. And so the intention here is that I drew a diagram <laughs> that we start creating um, a taxonomy, really, what, which is what this is here. Um, trying to create a kind of a consistent way for us to talk about uh, open source activities within a university that could be related to, to metrics. And there's a couple reasons why I think this is important. So I think the taxonomy is something that we can develop here in the context groups. And so again, we have a context working group with uh, corporate OSPOs and we're doing something similar. And we have uh, a scientific software uh, context group as well. And we're doing something similar in there. So, but I think the, the, the taxonomy that would be developed in each of these different context groups might be a little bit different. There could be some overlap, but it might be a little bit different. And so the goal here is to first kind of sort out what this taxonomy can be. And that's what I continue to like to talk about today. Again, we have um, a new role in the chaos project called liaisons. And these liaisons are intended to kind of participate in the, the conversation we have here, um, listen to new metrics or metrics models that might come out of this conversation and help actually in the development of those metrics and metrics models. So again, the context groups like the one we're currently in, we wouldn't get into too much detail on the actual creation of metrics or metrics models, like down to the level of like having a template, making sure it's in the right format. A lot of that will be handled in our metrics and metrics models meetings. All right, so the liaisons are are here. So thanks for being a part of this part of this group. Um, as new metrics and metrics models are developed. We'll actually develop those in the, the specific chaos working groups where the metrics and metrics models need to be developed. So like, as an example, like Stephanie or Claire, you would join this meeting, help us understand what we need to develop, but the actual development work would be done somewhere else. And we bring it back to this group um, to kind of talk about what those metrics and metrics models can be. I think the intention here is to help with communication quite a bit too. So um, how do we communicate across context working groups? So are there similarities between the two or between the three? And then also there does seem to be a need for kind of communicating metrics and metrics models within your particular organization. So like, how do we, how do we frame the conversation around metrics and metrics models in support of organizational functions? All right, so the intention here is to kind of to kind of help us understand what we're working on. So in this working group, I think we are working on the taxonomy here. And I do think that we're gonna be working a little bit down the road on ways to communicate of what we learned from this working group and how to effectively do that. And again, I don't think that we're gonna be doing any metrics or metrics models development work specifically 
in this working group. That's what the liaisons help to do. Are there any questions on, on this, on kind of what this is all about? That's my dog, if you hear a dog in the background making weird noises. Is this helpful for folks? Yeah, Claire. Yeah, I, I have a, a quick question and I hope it's relevant. So um, it's just in the context of, sometimes in the context of this discussion, I've heard people try to relate the open source metrics that people have proposed thus far um, to existing university metrics. So they, they're they nothing got to do with open source. They're just like the stuff that universities measure. Um, and, and I'm just wondering, is is that going to be a factor here? I, I in particular when I think about that communication challenge in the future. Yep. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of conscious that sometimes the folks that we'd be communicating to wouldn't have any clue about open source and, and they're probably thinking a different metric model that are university metric models. Um and I'm 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 just wondering if is that yes. how, how we're thinking about that. We are we are definitely. So and in fact, I think coming from this conversation that we've had over the last several you know, meetings, I think a lot of the metrics that you are talking about are just that. They aren't necessarily about a community in particular. They're not you know, kind of at that pointed level, but they're how they relate to um, the university more broadly. So very much yeah. so. When I, when I think of, so to echo Claire's point, when, when I think of the goal question metric model that we've used to build metrics, I think for university people, a lot of times the goal is to explain the tenure and promotion value of doing this open source work. That that without having, uh, there's other purposes, of course, curricul curricularly, and those are outlined nicely. But I do think that is a, that that's kind of an overarching goal, one of possibly several, that maybe we want to foreground. A little bit more or not how do you what would you think about how do you foreground that sean it's i i think of um so if you go back to the slide where you have your grid there so the improvement of research reproducibility <laughs> and repl replicability so for research research excellence um and the, the association with funding there's a the, the research excellence is buried in there, I think, possibly, is that getting credit as for, for tenure and promotion for doing this kind of work like that. That column includes the two things that are in it. But I think the motivation for researchers, for faculty, at least, who would be engaged in this would would focus, would include metrics that are centered more around evidence of research metrics and ways of evaluating and giving credit for the scholarly contributions that the open source software work represents and that's 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 a discussion that's been going on a long time and uh, you know Stephen Jacobs at RIT is running that fight uh, quite a bit right now but but I think it's important I think somewhere in here it's important I don't know whether it's orthogonal, whether it's that column, but I, I think it is a, a central goal. Could you, um, maybe a good way to capture this right away would be in the notes on this. And so maybe like see slide eight, slide eight is the first like drill down of the two related to research excellence. You know what I mean? Like we have, this is one and this is a second. Could you kind of put that there, that note, just in with respect to research excellence? So like it would be like research excellence. Or why? You see what I'm doing? Can you see my notes? Yeah. Yeah. Sean, you're right. Sean, we can see your lips moving, but nothing's coming out. Oh, I'm so sorry. I muted myself somehow. So, um, so, you so yes, I was on the wrong. I was on the wrong edition of that slide. That slide's twice in the deck, and so yes, I will go down to the right slide. Okay. So yeah, I think this would be a great way 
I mean, I, it'd be essentially helping us define each one of these activities across the top, which is good as to what the motivation for them is. Great. So um, kind of to your point, Claire, like these are, this is by no means set. So this is a way of thinking about open source within the university. So what, how do we think about open source at this um, within the org? And so the question that we've been kind of working through are, are, are these kind of the, maybe a top level set of activities or functions that a university might care about with respect to, to open source? It may not be a perfect set, but is it a is it a good starter set for us? This can get wider and deeper, but for the time being, it's just meant to get us off the ground. Okay. Okay, good starter set, great. And so the... The intention here is that within each one of these activities across the top, we have a certain set of goals that can help kind of speak to that activity. And so these would be the goals, you know, down below that are speaking to that particular activity. Again, not a perfect set of goals by any means, but it might be a set of goals that can speak to, say, research translation or to, to education. So maybe, you know, maybe we could go kind of one by one. Um, so research excellence, and this is based on conversations we've had. This is hopefully not just out of my own brain, um, but research excellence, we have a couple things. Um, Stephanie, I know, had talked uh, quite a bit about research reproducibility and replicability as, as a goal to kind of tie to research excellence. And then funding has come up quite often to correlate open source activity with research funding. Do these fit in a research excellence conversation or do you see them maybe kind of fitting elsewhere? You know, what's your your initial reaction to that? Well, I definitely still think that the first the research, the reproducibility aspect is important to okay. the research excellence. Um, and I think that the the funding aspect um, kind of, it, they're just directly related. I think that there's like in, in real world terms, it's, a, you know, if you have the, ideally, if you are able to like have good research that the, the funding will hopefully come. Okay. And build. <laughs> so I think that there's, I mean, it may not be it may not be a metric everybody like wants to use to show that it, your research is good. Oh, that's where the money is. But it, yeah. I think that that's um, okay. I, I mean, in real world terms, it's it's important. So okay, so you think this is a, at least a reasonable column yeah. yes. for the time being? Okay. Any other thoughts on that? And again, not not a perfect set. We can always go back and and add or modify. I mean, and also trying to figure out we're we're a lot of focus what we're doing beyond like some of the discussions we've been having about you know tenure and and that is just generally getting an idea of um, how the visibility of open source within the university and how important that is. It's actually a huge push with uh, for us within within our our uh, our efforts. Um, and. I'm wondering how that if that fits into research excellence or if that more is just an overarching issue that we need to discuss. So I'm I'm wondering if that's a good place to also put that. I can add that into the notes there. Yeah, maybe into the notes. I the the couple places, Stephanie, where I have so I've been kind of trying to work through this list and go with questions that might help us address these goals. Mm -hmm. And a couple places where I wrote a question on that was um so he, here, it was just in terms of open source. Pro so this, I guess this runs under the assumption that I know where those open source projects are <laughs> in, in order to answer whether or not they're funded. Right. Um, so there is an assumption certainly there. And then the other, like just in terms of getting 
like a landscape of where open source is was in in curriculum that was the other place i heard it and so is there a at santa cruz is there kind of an initial like landscaping process that yeah I, one of our big pushes and i'm sorry if you can hear my cat desperately trying to get in at the moment so it's driving me a little crazy i'm hearing a lot of scratching at the door um so uh the at santa cruz one of our big things right now that we're working uh, and we want to try and do this across the board for all of the university of california campuses that we're working with is to kind of get a better um uh, a better scope of how much open source is already out there and we're doing like we talked about the i think i talked about the the repo browser idea that we have and actually working with georg um or trying to work with georg we're trying to get funding so that we can all work together on on you know on on something like this and um that's one of our big pushes and it's really to get it because we found that you know just showing then raw numbers to leadership and is 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 pretty impressive like they're like whoa that's a lot of people working in open source within the you know university and it's and it hits a little bit on research it hits a little bit on uh the the education part it hits you know some on the trans like it hits everything at some to some extent that hits all, all, all you know those those four um kind of areas that you have on that slide so um and then also just generally like where your university sits in the whole scheme of like uh you know people like recognition for the university so there's a lot there yeah. so that's our that is a huge like right now i think that's kind of one of our main areas and something we see is like what we want kind of moving forward as we like kind of start rounding up our first at least the first two years of this effort that that's kind of one of the big things that we want to have come out of it and also what we want to have with regards to like something that other universities can follow because we see it as pretty a pretty powerful that would be a, like we see it as if we can get something that really is effective and useful to really uh show the yeah. level of open source even if it's like a raw data and then you just you have to use different metrics to really I, to 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 find it that's actually something we're we're really focusing on sorry so no no that's I so I have one um one comment and then I'm going to ask on a question so the comment that i had was um i think that's a the point is really well taken like this preliminary map of where open source is located within the university because i will say as i was going through these sets of activities and then kind of the respective goals and questions it they all do seem like there's an assumption that i know where <laughs> open source is it's built from that assumption that I can, once right. I have the map, I can start asking questions against the map. Right. And so the question that I have now for Dawn is that companies have been probably through this, or you've seen organizations through probably years ago, or maybe still are, are doing it. But I'm I'm curious as to, you know, you probably see where I'm going with this, but what what insight you have here? This is an unsolved problem. Um, it's something I've seen in every company I've ever worked for um, or with. It's it's just it's impossible to know where the open source stuff is coming from um, because there's there's no procurement process, there's no accountability. If I'm if I'm a random engineer, I can just pull something in and, and start using it within the infrastructure. Um, you know, I think from the standpoint of companies, I think that the way that we tend to think about it is we tend to figure out the bits that, that we can control and the bits that we really care about. So are they incorporating these open source projects in our products? Um, and if that's the case, uh, you know, we, we tracked that really carefully. We had, you know, basically kind of bills of materials sorts of things um, for, for the software that was in our products. But random people using random things there's just just not a lot of accountability and just really no way to track that or, or visibility what what sean or or visibility yeah you know we, we don't know that, no. that it's being used so then so don it sounded like <laughs> if the question was show us all the open source in the company the answer is yeah can't do it yeah exactly um 
but then it sound it sounds like companies maybe stepped back and said where are the critical what are the critical slices of that pie <laughs> where we do need to understand the presence of yeah. open source and focus was and to be fair um that's that's a much easier problem um is to to track the open source that's going into your products Okay. Um, because you have, you have a release, right. And you can look at that release and you can tell what's in it. So, so we had tooling that, you know, pulled together all the open source license files for all the, all the software that was in the, the, uh, you know, the products. And so we had a whole like tooling and process around that, but that's, that's kind of, you know, easy from the standpoint of someone wants to release a product, they have to go through this process. Um, and part of that process is discovering what open source tooling is. Um, in the in the product but it's you know it's one of the things like you know we we tried to approve uh you know people contributing to open source projects there was an approval process to be able to contribute to an open source project um and people just people just didn't use it to be honest like some people used it and some people didn't but there's no there's no real way to tell so i'm i'm curious to know Stephanie's or, or Claire's re reaction to that. Yeah, I, 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 for, I think from a university perspective, you have to make it a more, um, like a, uh, like a, I was thinking like a carrot and stick type, like the, the approval process would not be something we could do, but if we say, Hey, these are these, the, like, we can help ease you into something that might be helpful to you. And, the, and, and be a kind of a, a central point to come to for folks but it also takes a lot of our effort to get the word out that we're there and because and i think that's what we find is like it's it, it the usefulness of the uh, initial kind of discovery process on this is knowing like being able to see like maybe um maybe we'll see like 10 to fifteen thousand, you know repos which we actually i think is what the number we found at ucse uh like this huge number well then and then being able to refine that down to see where the highlights are. And those are the people that we are, you know, or those are the top, the areas that we focus on. And that helps us kind of starting to filter um, any noise. And then also to get into the actual people that where it, the, the people, the work that's being done that's most, that kind of has the most impact. And so, um, but I mean, that's kind of where we see it going as, so it's not as much like obviously in a corp in a corporation you also have a little bit more, um, that yeah there is this like uh like this, there's different there's a difference between how we do it because because university it's much more open we you know we don't mind people doing you know going into projects where we're a little bit more willy nilly than I'd see in a in a corporation but we do want to see you know there's like having more understanding of the 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 scope of what's going on is help more helpful for us to kind of like to support it better and to make it much more impactful. So, um, so I think it's, yeah, so I think it's like interesting to see what the differences would be um, from a university perspective, how we can use this data and information to kind of better, you know, support open source within the university setting. Does that make sense? It does. I'm, I'm, is there a reason um, I'm trying to think of just from a university like workflow perspective, from a, a corporate perspective, Don was talking about um, products, open source. Right, right, right. And that's a, a workflow that um, it seems like you have some better visibility into with respect right. to open source. Um, would there be a, a reason not to, to, try to define what those workflows could be in a university where we would have that visibility. And the one I immediately think of is with granting. So, I mean, there are, there is, that, that is a whole process unto itself with pre-award and post-award where you have quite a bit of visibility into what researchers are doing and the questions you can ask them just because of all of the audit mechanisms that are associated with grant processes. Well, I mean, we're, Claire, did you have a, 
I just wanted to add to that. So the granting process is definitely one. So the feedback we've had from Irish universities is that some of the grants that are being um, uh, allocated now from the European Union are explicitly asking for open source as part of their open science uh, agenda. Um, and so the universities are talking, how do we track that? How do we track what grants are asking for open source? And if we're delivering on the open source in relation to that in an appropriate way, and then how that relates to the technology transfer process is the second thing. Um, so the there has been, again, a lot of discussions, partially because some of the OSCOs in Ireland are, are um, in Trinity is specifically in the tech transfer office. And they've been talking about the challenge in their process of um, people explicitly uh, proactively alerting them to the fact that they are either using like what OSS they're using, what open source they're using, but also their intent to open source the end result. Um, and so there's a lot of discussion in that process flow about and, and it came up in the event that we held in, in Trinity here, um, Carnegie Mellon changed their process of notification so that it would it would allow for, uh, it would be more uh, friendly about uh, letting people know that if they, if they declare their intent to open source, that that might be a good thing and not necessarily seen to be a, a bad thing, as Sean kind of pointed out there, that there's kind of a, a pressure from the technology transfer offices to say, don't open source because we want to, commercialize everything but there right. may be good reasons to open source and therefore you know there, i think i think there's a little shift happening now in the tech transfer offices to understand mm. that a lot of people have to open source in order to get published in which case there has there has to be a conversation about the intent to commercialize is there an intent what's the connection between your 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 intent to open source a project because you have to get published and to get published, you have to open source the end result of your research output and what that might mean for commercialization later. So there's there's a lot, there's two, there's a lot of kind of processes in there that I think touch on, is it going to be open source? Am I using open source? What are the implications of that? And the tech, the tech transfer office understands selling a marketable non-open source project because that grows the university's foundation. What, open source does is grows the number of jobs in a community in technology and those are two different impacts and my tech transfer office cares about the first one much more than the second one but we do i'm oh, sorry say we have a little bit different like look, our relationship with tech transfer has always been really good and i okay we had Seth. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying mine's bad. No, 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 no. No, but I'm like, I understand they have a different view. Well, they have a different view because we started the conversation with having Seth in our back pocket that brought in more money than any other any commercial like non-open source thing that I could that that yeah, UCSC had ever had seen really. I mean, you know, all of our I think I think it's a different perspective because UCSC like has a even when you look back to the Genomics Institute and the Genomics you know, the human genome project that brought like so there's a different view. So I it's a hard for it's, it's funny for me to look at like when I look not that I feel like our tech transfer office is completely like completely 100 percent oh everything should be open source, but they do understand they have a different perspective. And I think it's because it, they actually see the commercial, not commercial value, but the actual financial value of having open source as well. Like they have, they haven't had to be convinced. Let's put it that way. In the same way, I think other te tech transfer offices have been. So it's almost would be interesting to see. That would be an interesting thing to have a discussion about. That probably not in this forum, but elsewhere where it's you know, how does the tech transfer offices? How do they see that? And how do you? What can you use case studies? Because I don't think UCSC is the only place where that's true. Uh, to just show that these are other ways and other models to to look at it. So, um, but I agree. Also agree with the idea that you know you need a lot of this for you need the open source step before you can you know have something move forward in, with regards to research nowadays mm -hmm. the uh, the other thing we're talking about um you know the the grant process we're actually working with our office of special projects to add to do they actually they're great because they have like a i they can basically run searches for us with just and just do the raw thing they can't add like a, anything like a um the, the the current system isn't equipped to us for us to just add a little like checkbox, which is what we would like to add in the whole grant process. 
Uh, but they're hoping that in the next pro the next rollout of what we do, that they actually might be able to add something that specifically allows us allows for, uh, forces people um, working on grants to indicate if there's open source involved. Um, either you know they're going to use open source projects, uh, going to use open source within the research, or plan to open to open source the ultimate um, the the ultimate deliverable. Um, so those are things we're working on too. But right now they're basically they can do it through a, a kind of a search process, a little bit more you know manual. But um, that's what we're working with. Okay, so what I'm hearing here is there in terms of this is just landscape stuff i was which is again what a lot of these goals are aimed at but mm. just a sense of what's going on i'll have to kind of think about how these fit together but um, i know in universities to everybody's point there is control over the grant process and there is a potential to take a look into that process as to the open source that is either being used or planned to be open sourced out of there claire you had also talked about the tech technology transfer process with a declaration to open source is that and is that tied to grant funding are these two collab there's are kind of two different processes they, they're they separate but related so oh, what's, what's happening is that grants are now insisting on open source I got that has a knock-on effect because the technology transfer offices aren't seeing that the grants are insisting on open source they that they, they're not related to today I but, there, but there's an implication then. So now I can see that it might be in the future that there would be a but shared some, information some, yeah, somehow. Yeah. Like, yeah, like this, this multi-million dollar grant is insisting on open source. So there just so we know tech transfer, that like you'll have to be careful about what, what they're doing there or at least know what they're doing there before you make assumptions about spin outs and commercializing the NIP and all this I kind gotcha. of thing. I gotcha. It Gotcha. That makes a ton of sense. And there is a possibility for somebody to enter the tech transfer process, obviously, without grant funding. So and, and also with 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 the no SS project. So now I, I think there certainly from our perspective to build on what Stephanie was saying, we went into we held an event in March and um, assuming before tech tra technology transfer offices in universities, not necessarily US OSS advocates. And we assumed they would actually be anti OSS that they would because we had heard, rightly so, that their met their metrics, the, the things that they are measured on, would would suggest that they would not be supportive of OSS projects at all. But they were surprisingly positive because they were saying, "Look, it's happening anyway. We just need to get on top of this and understand the right place for OSS projects, mm -hmm. or in some cases where you might want to start with an OSS project and potentially give yourself the option to close the source later and things like that." Like they were all there were there was lots of discussions that were very practical about the fact that this is a landscape where lots of options are available to people but it's important to understand where you're starting where you're going and what the whether or not you're closing options for yourself in the future that's that was what they were talking about that makes a ton of sense don did you have a comment or you were unmuted okay no i just forgot to mute after my last comment <laughs> I just I use hands and mute unmute as an indicator sometimes. <laughs> okay, so this is super helpful. Um, are there any other? And honestly, this is really interesting because I think these align a lot with what Don was talking about before, just in terms of product, like the visibility that we have into particular processes. It made me think that if we were to ask open source about open source that is exists in the classroom that may be vastly more difficult because that would require self-report from faculty members <laughs> and um, yeah good luck with that yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know if people have addressed this at all and i was wonder if it's easier to like uh ask the Ask students do it. Yeah. Students <laughs> like they might be more willing to give them a, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, it may be more easier to get students to react to uh, accepting that question. But um, I, I mean, I'm not sure if it's something we could, you could do like a survey of syllabi. syllabi. I mean, like that, you know, is that, will it state it in, you know, will people state something along those lines in, in, in their syllabus? Uh, 
And that's all, of course, on, you know, publicly, not, well, public, not always publicly available, but within the university setting, it's available. Like I can see all of the syllabi in, from UCSC. So, mm -hmm. um, and department, yeah, I like that department chair reporting. That might be an easier way of doing it. I mean, but then, yeah, do, and then that, I always find it easier if you're not requiring things, but you're just, you know, going, hey, this would be really useful if you told us this so we can help you with this. <laughs> so, and that's so yeah. like, Requiring it from the department chair may be like more of a, a nightmare than just going, hey, we have this thing we can offer you. You just got to let us know that you're doing this other thing. So, yeah, we know that you're using, if you, we know you're using open source, we can help you with this, that type of thing. So, but I mean, it depends. I, it's also probably the different uh, universities have different cultures where, you know, having, um, you know, having this discussion, we are having like the uh, requested, requesting reporting may actually may actually work yeah um, maybe you know, it working in this yeah. I think at UCSC I could see it working just because there's a positive inclination for open sure. so like know what those incentives would be for. yeah yeah you need to kind of even know your incentives yeah but like for the students it's like you know give them a gift card or <laughs> enter them in a drive I once heard a phrase about <laughs> that faculty won't tie their shoes for anything less than seven hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> 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 Uh, it's probably not wrong. <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> um, Claire, you had a few comments in the chat too. Is there anything you wanted to kind of draw forward from those? I, I suppose just uh, just when when you were thinking about the classroom, I suppose I, the thing that had hit me was around this idea of the skills that they're providing. So. I have we there have been um, surveys done in some of the Irish um, you, uh, institutions about are you delivering graduates with open source mm -hmm. skills and, how to, and, and then they'll all claim yes we absolutely cover open source and then you learn that they once created a github they've asked their students to create a github account for one project mm -hmm. and that's it like they don't you know mm -hmm. that that's that's the level of what they do so um so I suppose when I thought of the classroom I was thinking not about the open source use there but the number of people who have been trained in open source slash told how to set up a GitHub account or well, not, or if there's more, you know? I, I like that because it, it kind of abstracts the question about is open source present? Just, you're just kind of asking like, are you skilling around open source? And it's kind of a yes, no question. And it at least gives you some indication of- Intent. How people, yeah, least. how many people think they're connecting with open source. <laughs> and it's better than no visibility at all. Um, is this a, a is this something that that happens regularly? No, so it's a, where I have come across it is where you know both from a community perspective and or when when they're doing these kind of general kind of skills uh, like there's there's a European community of folks that are doing digital skills for the future thing, and sometimes these groups have to report back on what are you doing for AI. What do you, you know, how many people in, in Ireland are being trained on AI? How many people in Ireland are being trained on open source? So they they put in these questions and then often there's a survey, but I don't know if it's anything that's either regular or gotcha. you know, updated. I, I I do know that I have seen some reports from some universities say, yes, we're definitely teaching open source, but I don't know how complete that survey was or. Okay. No, but it's a, it's a really, it's a good idea. I like it. Um, I mean, when I, what I observe in my with my students is they're, they're adept at using GitHub technically, but the, the practices of collaborating around a project are, that's what I'm teaching them, but that there's, they have a long way to go even after a semester long class, because it's a, it's just a very, there's a lot to grasp. So are there any other, um, maybe like, areas where we could potentially see open source. I think we have the, a couple up here which have more fixed paths. One here that is a little bit looser. Are there any other ways that people can think about to see open source in the university? This is a pretty good start as far yeah, as Yeah, I mean, the only way, like some of the open science discussions we were having, I think kind of don't quite fit in there, there's more the collaborative work when when we're talking about I, I don't I like I don't feel like that necessarily hits the funded projects or yep. technology transfer that what would is, be collaborate like collab sorry what what is open science in this case yeah I like it was, it, 
Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, but like, just like working, um, you know, like re it's basically for similar to what we're talking about, which is oh, re open research, but that allows for collaboration amongst um, amongst scientists, not just within the university, but with like okay. ex externally as well. Um, and I think that's a, that seems to be a, a lot of the you know, push towards um, within open source, at least what I've been seeing within funding is focusing a lot on that. Of course, with like the year of open sciences. That feels a little out of scope for this. Yeah. I I mean, just just because I know it's discussed within the university so but maybe we can yeah maybe we can just table that and see how if it comes up like within okay. the discussion so the only other one that I had sort of included here was open data yeah occasionally I just I kind of felt like some of the mechanisms were kind of the same I feel like the support the creation and sustainability of communities might also fit in there okay Let's, let's, yeah, let's table it for now because I think that might okay. we might see that it kind of sparkles. And I think Claire's point about the maturity aspect too. Okay, so let me um let me continue to we're getting close to the end here. Um, this is a great discussion. I think it actually I was looking to kind of go down into the questions, but I think this discussion actually drew me back out <laughs> of of this model by saying, you know, one of the first things I think we need to do is reflect on how we even gain visibility into the open source that's occurring at the university before we can even start answering some of these questions. Right. So I think that's, that's really helpful for me. So let me think about how this conversation that we had right here can fit um, with here. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna, I have some ideas I'll, I'll write up for the next time. I, I do think there is this connection that needs to be described that they are not unrelated and they are unrelated it's it's both in a weird way i think well can you provide yeah, write that up on your uh, main uh, comment there <laughs> uh, well i mean so i mean i think a lot of what we're talking about here is really looking inward towards an individual university or yeah. collection of universities and i think when we're talking about open science we're talking about an enterprise that spans multiple institutions and funding agencies and of course they're interconnected because we seek money from those agencies but how we measure them from each perspective i think is that this is an important distinction gotcha gotcha, gotcha. yeah if you want to jot that down that would be great yeah I, I just made a note that i'll bring that to our next meeting okay great um all right well i think we're at the end of time it's always good to have a <laughs> <laughs> get to me a very thoughtful discussion. I think we're still getting there just in terms of, you know, what the metrics and metrics models can be. But I think this is also kind of highlights that we set this taxonomy first, that we set up what we're talking about first before we just go into here's the metric or the metric model that we need <laughs> when we're not even quite sure what it fits. So I, I think yeah. this is really helpful for me just to kind of back us out into this taxonomy and kind of building a shared language for ourselves and only really from there can we get into the metrics and metrics models that can help us kind of address the issues uh, that come out of this taxonomy so thank you for that we really appreciate it yeah i feel like we got real concrete today so we're going forward yeah why can't we just solve everything in one 50 minute meeting why, <laughs> why is we're not using why, because we're not using chat gpt <laughs> I'm waiting for that meeting to happen. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. It's good to see you, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.